Okay, uh, welcome to this Z1 dashboard tutorial. Uh, so right now I'm just sitting in the pits uh, in a uh, McLaren GT car. And what I'd like to talk about right now is uh, fuel consumption and uh, fuel to finish a race. So on this side of the dashboard, we have a couple of numbers here. One is the average fuel per lap, and one is the fuel to finish. Uh, right now, as I'm just sitting in the pits and haven't actually driven anywhere, these are both zero. But as you do laps within a race, uh, these numbers uh, get defined, and we know how much fuel we use per lap, and we would know how many laps we have to go in a particular race. And uh, most of the dashboards in the Z1 dashboard software have this as uh, a display, the average fuel per lap and the fuel required to finish, and in some cases, the amount of fuel you need to put in for your pit stop. So I'm just going to get out of the car here and then go to the settings dialog. Now if I click here on the car one tab, there are several settings in this tab which are very important to set properly in order to get the right calculation of how much fuel do you need to finish the race. So there are basically two types of races. There is a race which is defined by the number of laps in it. Maybe you have to do 100 laps and then the race is over. And then there's also a race which is the time. And you have, say, an hour, and however many laps you can do in an hour is the number of laps in the race. So the first thing about determining how many laps you have to go is obviously figuring out how fast you're going per lap and then how many laps there are to go in a timed race. Uh, in a race where there's just a fixed number of laps, it's simple. It's just whatever that number of laps is. So let's talk about determining how you figure out what your average lap time is and how the dashboard software will use that to figure out the number of laps in a race. So right here, under average lap time, there are three options that you can enter. Uh, if you enter the number zero, the software will use all of your laps to determine what your average lap time is. And uh, this is the default option when you first start the software. Uh, you can also enter a percentage, which is done as uh, 0 0.00 through 0.99. And that means the software will use, uh, only, will only include a lap if it is within a certain percentage of your average lap times to that point. So say my average lap time is uh, 60 seconds and I say I only want to include laps which are within 10% of that, that means any slow laps, which are 66 seconds or higher, will not be included. Uh, and this is quite useful because it uh, throws out things like full course caution laps, or perhaps there was an off-track moment or something like that. And then the final option is you can put in just a number, say 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, and it will then use that number of laps, uh, the previous number of laps, to determine your average lap time. So if you put in uh, three, then it will use the previous three laps to determine your lap time. And this is quite good because it will then discount uh, the start lap, which is usually slower. And it will also discount then um, any yellow flag laps or pit laps that you may have had as the race moves on. And it gives you an accurate representation of how many, uh, of what your average lap time is uh, at, the, at this point in time. So once the dashboard software knows how you want to calculate the laps, um, it can then determine your average lap time and determine the number of laps to go in the race. The next step is determining how much fuel you use in the race. And that is what the fuel per lap is for. Uh, if you enter zero, just as an average lap time, it will use all of your laps to determine how much fuel you use per lap. Uh, and then there are two other options. One is you can use the previous uh, X number of laps. So in this case, I put in minus three, and that means it will use the previous three laps to determine my average fuel consumption. And uh, I find this is uh, the most accurate way of doing it because then you discount your first lap, which usually is slightly off. And uh, if you hit any full course cautions or anything like that, after a few laps, they are then uh, discounted again as you move on. And the final option is you can actually enter a specific amount. So if you know that you use one and a half gallons of fuel per lap, if I type in here 1.5, then it will always use 1.5 gallons to uh, set how much fuel I use in uh, every lap. 
and that amount is actually based on the measurement I'm currently using. So if I'm using liters and I put in 1.5, it, uh, it will take that as meaning 1.5 liters per lap. So now we know uh, how, to how the dashboard software will calculate our lap times, and we've told it how we wanted to calculate our fuel consumption. And so with those two things, it can determine exactly how much fuel is required to finish the race. And it does this down to the finish line, with the idea of being that you will actually run out of gas when you cross the finish line. Now that can be a little bit close, so we've added in a fuel buffer right here. And you can specify the number of liters that should be added to whatever calculation the dashboard software uses to come up with the final number of uh, the final amount of fuel needed to finish the race. So I have this set at three liters right now, which means if the dashboard software thinks I need 10 liters of fuel to finish, it will actually tell me I need 13 to finish. Uh, and that gives me a little bit of wiggle room in case I use a bit more fuel than expected. Uh, perhaps I was pushing harder or something along those lines. And now the final thing to think about, especially in a timed race, is uh, if you're the leader of the race, then obviously however many laps you can do in the race, that's the number of laps that are going to happen in the race. But if you're not the leader, say you're going to finish 30 seconds behind them or something like that, then even though you might be able to do 30 laps in a race, they might be able to do 31, which means you're going to have to do 31. And if the dashboard software has calculated the number of laps to go based on how many you can do, you're going to be one lap short of fuel, and that's going to be disaster. So if you set this option here to leader times, then it will use the, uh, the fast lap of the leader to determine how many laps can be done in the, uh, the, in the race. The other option is my times, which means it will use your lap time to determine how many laps can be finished in the race. Uh, this is very useful if you're in, say, a multi-class race and you're not in the fastest type of car. So if you're in a GT car uh, and the leader is running a prototype, you wouldn't want to have the, the dashboard software calculate the, the number of laps to go based on that prototype because they may do 50 or 100 laps more than you're going to do. Uh, so in this case, you want to set that to my times, and then it will calculate based on your times and not the leader. So using those four options, you can tell the dashboard software uh, how to do the average times, how to do the fuel per lap, and if you want a buffer uh, to make sure you actually get to that finish line uh, with a bit of fuel to spare. And uh, then when you get into the pit stop, you just put in the amount of fuel uh, it suggests and you're good to go.